Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 9th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. On Friday, our handler Jan came across an interesting phishing email. What made it stand out was the size of the HTML attachment in this email. It carried about 930 kilobytes. The HTML file did not only include simple HTML code to replicate a legitimately looking login page, but the author went as far as to include a complete copy of jQuery and Bootstrap to make the site look and behave more plausible. Now, once a user fills in credentials into the HTML page, they are of course submitted to a website, but it's more difficult to take down these websites because uh, once you look at it, uh, well, it's just an empty page. There is no trademarkable logo or anything like this on the actual website, which of course means that uh, many automated tools and sort of try to identify and shut down phishing sites will not work. And China is dusting off its Great Cannon again, or sometimes it's also called the Red Cannon, to launch denial of service attacks against a forum supporting the protesters in Hong Kong. This Great Cannon is a feature of China's Great Firewall. The firewall is not only able to block access to content, but it is also able to modify content. The first time I remember having heard of this feature was back in 2015 when GitHub was attacked using the Great Cannon. Back then, the Great Cannon was used to convince GitHub to remove projects that attempt to bypass the Great Firewall. Since then, it has been used a couple of times, but those attacks haven't really sort of hit the news in a major way. The Great Cannon borrows a technique used by the Low Orbit Ion Cannon. Low Orbit Ion Cannon uses JavaScript to bombard a website with requests. It was heavily used by Anonymous, but Low Orbit Ion Cannon typically required Anonymous sympathizers to visit a specific website. The website would then load the JavaScript into the user's browser to start the attack. With not too many sympathizers outside of China willing to participate in an attack like this, the Chinese government resorted to a different trick that turned this into the Great Cannon. If a user outside China downloads JavaScript from a server inside China without using HTTPS, so just via normal HTTP, the Great Cannon will replace or amend the JavaScript to insert code inspired by the low orbit Ion Cannon. So in essence, this ends up then with turning various browsers around the world into denial of service agents. And yes, this is not really an exploit. This is really just a JavaScript feature being used here. Now, identifying and analyzing this behavior tends to be tricky. Not all requests receive an altered response. It is not clear if this is due to the limited capacity of this feature or if the impact is throttled on purpose once it achieves its goal. The script being replaced is usually a statistics analysis script that many websites include, like from Baidu, for example. So it's not at all just JavaScript is affected, just very specific URLs are being replaced, but these tend to be quite popular URLs. In general, if you include code hosted on a different site in your web application, you should always take advantage of sub resource integrity. Of course, also you should use HTTPS for any code like this. Mixed content is always a bad idea. But of course, HTTPS uh, will only protect you from some of these man-in-the-middle type attacks like they're used here. They will not protect you if the actual source on that third-party site gets compromised. 
With SRI or Sub Resource Integrity, the browser will be given a hash of the file that you intend to include, and then the browser can verify if the file is correct. If not, then it will not execute and include this particular file. So even without China messing with content, third-party resources like this are often attacked also by other criminal groups, like for example, a mage card sort of is somewhat famous for this. For a website under attack, it's difficult to fend against this technique. The requests will originate from random users outside China, so it's just the JavaScript being loaded from China into the user's browsers. You may be able to filter these requests using the origin header. Depends on how they are really created, but typically, since these are then cross-origin requests, they should have a origin header if they are being sent using JavaScript, but likely the traffic will be just too much for you to filter at all at the parameter and some kind of anti-denial of service service is probably your only chance here. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.